this morning as we celebrate the life of Antoinette Stewart. And uh, we're going to start off with a word of prayer this morning. Thank you for coming as we honor her. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity we have to be here to celebrate the life of a young lady who has touched each one of us who are here in attendance this morning. I pray that you would receive honor and glory from all that's said and done this morning. And may we uh, do justice and uh, remembering Antoinette. And may we always remember her and carry on with us her legacy. In Jesus' name, amen. At this time, we're going to have a special song. Joshua Campbell's going to come. He's going to sing for us. What a day that will be as we remember that this is not the last time we'll see Antoinette. There will be another day we'll see her again in heaven. There is coming a day. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, 
I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff may comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And the New Testament selection is a well-known uh, passage, John chapter 14. In John chapter 14, Jesus is having a discussion with his disciples, and he reminds them that he's getting ready to leave them. John 14 says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way, ye know. Let's pray, and after I pray, we'll have a, a special solo. Father, we thank you once again for heaven, for the hope of heaven, for the blessed assurance, for that place that you prepared for us. And I pray, dear Lord, that you will be with the family, the friends who have gathered here today, that you'll be their shepherd and that you'll comfort them in, in this time of, of sorrow. But we don't have to sorrow as those without hope because we know that there is a place called heaven. And because Antoinette, she trusted you as her Savior, she is there right now with you in the presence of the angels. Bless each one of us now this morning, in Jesus' name, amen.
At this time, we'll have some acknowledgments. So if I could have the Sonia Pebbles come.
was a very, very sweet person. She was a member of the church. And we took her to go with the bathroom to the hospital in the emergency room. Many, many times she went. And she asked me, um, did you give me a ride? I said, sure. So I took her to the bathroom. Tanisha, she was my good, sweet friend. I really loved her. Before I was hanging around with her, when we were teens, and she would come to my home, and we just had a great time. We had a great time in church and camp. And I remember I looked back at her. The last time I saw her, was in March. She needed me to help her get her ride to the doctor. And she was going to the hospital in Chicago. So we went to the hospital in Chicago. Okay. And then to the hospital in Indiana. And I dropped her off at the hospital in Indiana. I love her. Thank you so much. She helped me with food. She helped me with a lot of things. I just love her. But no more, she's in the morning. This is a poem that her sister Jasmine wrote. The chains broken. Little did we know that day that God was going to call your name. A life we loved you dearly, a death we do the same. It broke our hearts to lose you. You did not come along. But part of us went with you the day God called you home. Uh, you left us beautiful memories. Your love is still our guide. And although we cannot see you, you are always by our side. Our family chain is broken. And nothing seems the same. But as God calls us, one by one, the chain will be free. Let the sister chat. Hi. Exit, Stuart. 
Okay. Was born July 1st, 1989, in Chicago, Illinois, to Michelle Brandon and Curtis Townsend. She had five sisters. Antoinette graduated from City Baptist School in Hammond, Indiana. Antoinette committed her life to Christ at an early age. She was a member of First Baptist Church of Hammond. Antoinette wor worked in child care. She loved sports, but especially basketball. She was a huge Bulls fan. She also loved to cook for special occasions and events. She had a vibrant spirit and a great sense of humor. She could light up a room with her smile. Antoinette was outgoing and she loved attending church services and events. Antoinette's special friend, Pat Crosby, preceded her in death. Antoinette departed this life on Tuesday, October the 18th, 2022, <clears throat> at the hospital surrounded by family. Antoinette leaves to cherish her precious memories, her mother, Michelle uh, Brandon, her father, Curtis, and Monica Townsend, her siblings, Dominique, Anthony Jennings, uh, Jasmine Townsend, <clears throat> Jasmine Townsend, uh, Kelsey Parker, Addison Townsend, and stepsister, Devonae Brandon, her grandmother, Rosemary, and Charles Frith, and her, and a host of aunts, uncles, two nephews, a niece, cousin, and one special friend, Felicia Perry Thomas. At this time, we're going to have uh, a solo, one more solo, and the song is entitled, His Eye is on the Sparrow, to remind us of God's care for us and how He always cares for us. And why should the shadows come? And why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home since Jesus?
I don't know if it, the first time I met Antoinette was in this room or if it was across the street. When it was here at First Baptist Church, I met Antoinette for the first time. My wife and I often would drive down to South Hammond, just across, just uh, right there next to the river where she lived, and we'd pick her up and we'd bring her to church quite often on Sunday nights and Wednesday nights. Sometimes Antoinette, she would call my wife up and say, I need a ride, and so we'd figure out a way of getting her wherever she was trying to get to. I had the wonderful privilege, I had the wonderful privilege of teaching at her alma mater. I teach at City Baptist School, been teaching there now for 10 years. And so Antoinette and I, we, we have crossed paths many, many occasions. And through the years, watching Antoinette, uh, she, she had a vivacious spirit about her. She always had a happy smile. She was always, always looking for something to enjoy doing. And, and despite the fact that the whole time she was struggling with heart issues, if you didn't know Antoinette, you wouldn't know that she struggled with issues with her heart. She didn't live to try to put focus on her problems. She tried to live in a manner that she was trying to enjoy everything she could about life. Oh, there are a lot of things about Antoinette that this morning, if we would just stop and consider, we could take and it should challenge us to want to be better people. I know that that. <clears throat> Her deafness, for some people, that seems to be a challenge. And to a deaf person, they don't look, that, look at that being a challenge whatsoever. Antoinette spent her entire life trying to live her life to its fullest. And she found early in life that the best way she could live it to its fullest was to get God involved in her life. And she came to a day where she realized that she needed to trust Christ as her Savior, as her only hope for eternal glory. And so on, on a day, she came to someone, a friend, and friend opened up the Bible and showed her how she could know for sure that she was going to heaven. Her friend explained to her that she was a sinner, just like all of us are sinners. Her friend explained to her that Jesus was the only hope for her because without Jesus, uh, our sin will take us to a Christless eternity in a place called hell. And, and her friend showed her how that Jesus had already paid the penalty for her, that her friend, that her friend explained to her that if she would just trust Jesus Christ as her only hope for heaven, not being a good person, not going to a church, not being baptized, but trust Jesus and Him alone as her only hope for heaven, that she too could have eternal life. And to that trust in Christ as her Savior. And as a result of that, today, while we come here and we mourn her, she has never been more alive than she is at this moment. She is alive. She did not die. Her body died, yes. But she's still, she's still alive. She is with Jesus right at this moment as we speak. And if I were to if I were to express something that I think she would want you to understand, I would think number one, she would want to want you to understand that you too can be with her again. I think she would want you to know that if you're here today and, you're, and you you say, Brother Cooper, I don't know that I'm going to have that you can before you leave you could know for sure that you're going to heaven. She would want you to know that. So if you're here today, that, that's your situation. I'm, I'm honored to be here, and if you like, I can take the Bible and I can show you what her friend showed her years ago, how you can know for sure that you're going to heaven, and I would love to do so. But I think another thing she would like you to understand is that our trials and our afflictions about for a moment. I, I thought about Antoinette and a person in the Bible came to my mind immediately. It was a man by the name of Job. Job had a lot of trials in his life and we all know Antoinette had trials in her life. But Job didn't let those trials uh, cripple him 
They didn't let those trials uh, keep him down. Those trials didn't keep him from serving God. Those trials didn't keep him from loving people and going out and, and helping people. I want to read a, a verse here from the book of Job. Job in one day lost all his family. All his children died in one day. Job in, in one day lost all of his wealth. He had three friends who basically turned against him. I don't know about you, but I don't know how I would take that. I, I, I think I would struggle with that mightily. And I'm sure many of us in this room, we would struggle with that mightily. But Job, he realized that he had God on his side. And by the way, God is on your side too. God is for, for you. And God was for Job, just as God was for Antoinette. In the book of Job, chapter number 23, verse number 10, it says, But he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. I thought of that verse immediately when, I, when uh, my wife, she sent me a text message and she told me that Antoinette had passed away. And I was a little stunned because it was just a few weeks ago that we were in a building right behind me and there was a funeral for her friend. We mentioned Pat Crosby here just two, three weeks ago. We had a memorial service for Pat Crosby and Aunt Antoinette was there at the funeral service and I got an opportunity to talk to her for a couple minutes and I had no idea that, that she was at that store at that moment. And when my wife texted me, she let me know that Antoinette had passed. Instantly, I thought about this first. The fact that we each go through trials in life. And those trials, those trials are for us to become as gold, to purify us, to make us better people. I think if Antoinette were here today, she would want me to know that her trials were trials to make her a better person. Her trials, her struggles with her heart for all those years that she was in and out of the hospital over and over again. Those trials were trials that make her a better person. You and I, we face trials. And I think Antoinette would want us to face our trials heroically just as she did. She didn't run away from her trials. She faced them. She went through her trials. Because she realized that each trial she endured, each trial she faced, was going to make her a better person. I want us to leave here today realizing that the trials we face, they're to make us better. They're not to make us worse. They're to make us better. This morning, as we remember Antoinette's vibrant personality, her laugh, her smile that lit up the room, I want you to remember that she was going through trials where she thought she did that. If I stub my toe, I get a bad attitude. Shame on me for getting a bad attitude. She's struggling with her heart, and she does it with a great attitude, a great spirit, a smile on her face. Let us be better people because we do answer that. Let us take what she has taught us by her life. And leave this place today realizing that we can light up a room with our smile. That we can take our trials and make, uh, help it make us better so that we can be better people to influence others. Let us not take this moment where we reflect on Antoinette's life and say, nothing. But that we're going to be better people because we do Antoinette. Because Antoinette's life impacted us in a deep, profound way. You heard sisters come here this morning, read poems. Deeply felt poems from the heart of how Antoinette affected their lives. Her mom came up here and, and read to us a poem, how Antoinette affected her life. Each one of us were here today because she affected our lives. But that effect is of no effect if we don't take what she taught us through her life 
and make us better people because of it. My challenge to you today is don't let Antoinette this be the last memory you have of her. Let your life be a memory of Antoinette. Let your life reflect the lessons that we learned from who she was as a person here and who we will once again see again in heaven. We read earlier from the book of John, chapter 14, that Jesus has gone to prepare a place for us. Right now, Antoinette's in that place that Jesus went ahead to prepare for her. And someday, if you've trusted Christ as your Savior, you will once again say hello to Antoinette again. And you will have that opportunity to embrace her again and have an opportunity to talk to her again, an opportunity to see her vibrant smile, her jovial laugh. You will have that opportunity again. I want, the next time I see Antoinette, I want that moment to be something where I can say, Antoinette, thank you for teaching me how to live. Thank you for teaching me how to endure trials. Thank you for teaching me how to take struggles in stride and still maintain a positive outlook and still maintain a positive attitude about life. Let us take these opportunities and live how Antoinette would live if she were in our shoes. Thank you so much for coming today. And to the family, we're praying for you. We love you. Uh, I'm so sad that, that you know, all had to move down to Indianapolis for the, the, that time. And missed seeing Antoinette on a regular basis. See Antoinette three times every week. Sometimes more than just the three times that we have service here. But we're praying for you that God will wrap his arms around you and comfort you during this time of sorrow. But you don't need to sorrow as one having no hope because there is a place called heaven. And Jesus did come to prepare a place for us. And, and uh, if you trust Christ as your Savior, you have the opportunity to see her again. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for the opportunity to be here to celebrate the life of Antoinette Smith, or Stuart. And I pray, dear Lord, that you would be with each one of us, that we would reflect on Antoinette's life, and that we would remember how she went through trials and tribulation, and that she realized that going through those trials and tribulations would make her a better person. May we take on that same challenge, to take on the challenges of life, so that we also may be better people, because we do it tonight. With your head, heads bowed and eyes closed, death looking at the interpreter, please. If you're here today, and you don't know for sure you're going to heaven, why not make today that our day? If you're sitting here and you're thinking to yourself, I don't know that I'm going to heaven, but I sure want to know. Why don't you tell Jesus right now, Dear Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. And I know the penalty for sin is hell. And Jesus, I do know that you're the Savior, that you came and you died for me. You came to pay my penalty for sin. I right now trust you as my only hope for heaven. Please come into my life and save me from my sin and give me a home in heaven. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. If you're here today and that was your prayer, make sure you take time to go to Antoinette's mother, her family. And let them know that you today trusted Christ as your Savior. Feel free to come to me and let me know. Today was the day I trusted Christ as my Savior. Most important day in a person's life is the day you trust Christ as your Savior. What a better, there is no better way you can honor Antoinette's memory than making today the day if you've never trusted Christ as your Savior, making today that day. Thank you for coming.
struggling with the family to open Memory Lane Cemetery. We have funeral stickers that we will be passing out to you. We would like for you to place those on the inside of your right windshield. That would be on your passenger side. We're asking that you turn on your headlights as well as your hazards. And we will be forming our line outside in front of the church. We're going to ask that you would line up behind the hearse. We need people to help us with the flowers as well as the plants. And if you're not going to the cemetery, uh, immediately following the cemetery, there's a repass at the Deacon Sun Annex, which is on 184th and Pulaski. That's not it. Yes, that's it. Okay. Correction. It's going to be at the Deacon Sun Funeral Home in Madison.